Hey you guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin and welcome to another video in our Buyer's Guide series. Today we are talking all things drop shot. So today we're talking about drop shot and believe it or not, it took us a long time to really narrow down the amount of baits between the two of us, what we wanted to simplify and talk about but we have a ton of confidence in all these baits and they all have kind of a different area, different species they go for. Large mouth, spots, small mouth. Mm -hmm. um, you wanna start with rods, baits, what do you wanna do? Let's kick it off with rods. Throw me one. All right. We've got budget, we've got bang for the buck and we've got super high end. This is our budget option and as, well I said bang for the buck, this is also bang absolutely for bang for the buck. Uh, I went with this rod because of how much you get for such a small spend. This is St. Croix's Mojo Bass Line, specifically the 610 Medium Light. Uh, it's the 610 Medium Light Extra Fast paired to a Shimano Miravel. Both of these are ridiculous. Uh, if I told you that that combo was coming in, well, with the sale that's going on, 200 bucks. Without a sale, it'd be a little bit more. Right around 200 bucks and it weighs nothing. I mean, that's crazy. Normally, budget-friendly gear weighs a lot. Right. That's how they make it budget-friendly. This is a super light, super smooth, crisp rod, great sensitivity. In this category, I mean, basically untouchable. Just a killer, bang for the buck, budget option thought we were doing a rod seminar for a second we might still i've still got another shot <laughs> no i'm gonna take both of these <laughs> uh what'd you call this one bang yeah. for the buck and what and what'd you call middle of the pack what'd you call That's it still bang for the buck this is bang for the buck this is not middle of the pack this is an extremely awesome high-end high high rod this is an x pride 72 medium light paired up with a shimano vanford this guy right here is a crazy light combo, super smooth reel. This could be, if I didn't have this one, it would be my everyday drop yeah. shot combo. You know, for us, you guys know that we fish a lot, we travel a lot, you know, we have dedicated rods for techniques. Drop shot kind of is, at least for me, it was that really that first technique that I had my first technique specific rod i didn't go out and take my seven three four power rod and drop shot on it i went out and got a dedicated drop shot rod and through the years i've upgraded my stuff and and ended with this this is unless you want to talk about it this is you know i want to this you is go the, right ahead this is the 822 uh dsr drop shot rod uh, nrx plus doesn't get lighter than that uh, paired up with a shimano stella uh, this is the ultimate drop shot combo now Drop shotting is one of those techniques where, I mean, you can cast out and fish it through the cover or you can vertically fish it. So that's why some of these rods seem a little short, you know, 610 to 72. It's typically that size range of rods for this technique. You don't necessarily need a seven foot six or a seven foot eight drop shot rod, right? right. A lot of times you're vertically fishing you know, a drop shot, if you're not familiar with it, I guess we should have covered that. I guess it, that is important. It we suspends, tell you, what it is. you have a weight at the bottom, it suspends your bait up and you're sitting there shaking and letting that, that worm do the little wiggle right there and get, get eaten. But um, a lot of times you're vertically fishing a drop shot. So that's where those shorter rods come into play. All right, let me, um, I'm gonna jump into all three of these hooks and then whatever you wanna do from there. We'll just, we'll just dive into it. Drop shotting, I mean, Tim just gave you the, the basics, right? You've got a weight on the bottom, line comes up, hook tied on your main line, and your bait can be three inches off the bottom, it could be 18 inches off the bottom. You set that according, uh, but there are a variety of hooks that you could use. We have identified three that do 99%. Do they do 100%? Most I mean, of it, yeah. They, they really do. My number one hook is the Owner Mosquito Light specifically size one. Uh, that's what I use for the vast majority of these baits, especially when I'm chasing smallmouth. Uh, I love that super lightweight hook. The Mosquito Light weighs almost nothing. 
And people overlook weight of hook when they're drop shotting. Weight of hook is huge because you're shaking that bait, but then you slack it out. And it, it'll either fall to the bottom, it'll go nose down, or it can sit there and it can float. Weight of the hook is a huge deal. So that Mosquito Light is my bread and butter. Another one, this is the Gamakatsu G Finesse drop shot hook. Slightly thicker wire, slightly. Still an extremely light hook, still floats the bait extremely well. The difference is if I'm catching mid-sized fish, that Mosquito Light, I'm good. But if I think I might suddenly tie into a largemouth or a really angry spotted bass or something like that, a little bit stronger wire can go a long ways without going over the top. There are a lot of drop shot hooks on the market right. I will not use because they're too thick. They, you watch in underwater footage, you stop that worm and they just go whoop and head to the bottom. Big difference. The last one is the Owner Cover Shot HD. The cover shot is for Texas rigging your baits. Think fishing cover, flipping grass, fishing docks, more largemouth, big fish minded, right? Uh, a lot of people think drop shot, they think New York, clear water. The drop shot fishes everywhere. You can be flipping in a swamp with a drop shot, it catches them. And that HD version of the cover shot, this came out this year. My only concern with the cover shot ever is that I used to bend them out if I got big ones in the grass and I have a tendency to lean on them and I could bend those hooks. They came out with the HD, heavy duty, problem's gone. That was a great hook. Yeah, drop shot's just one of those techniques that a lot of guys, I seem like, it seems like more and more guys are, are using it, but it suspends that bait up off of the bottom. You know, Carolina rig, a jig, a Texas rig, all those baits are on bottom. When you take that same worm and suspend it a foot, 16, 18 inches off bottom and put it in that fish's face and just sit there and shake it, that's what makes the drop shot so, so special. Yeah. And like Matt said, I can't tell you how many big largemouth I've caught throwing a drop shot on a bait caster with a Texas rig six or seven inch worm, um, just throwing a power shot. Yeah. Uh, since we're talking about gear real quick, I'll cover weights real quick. Basically, there's two styles of weights. You have a cylinder style and a teardrop style. Uh, me, personally, I like throwing tungsten weights. Agreed. Um, a drop shot is one of those techniques where it's all about feel, right? It's all about feel, and you wanna know, are you fishing in mud, are you fishing in pea gravel? You know, you, you get a lot more sensitivity with tungsten versus lead. It's a lot more dense of a material, and it just transfers that that sensitivity so much more up your line than lead does. So if you can get away with it, go with some kind of tungsten sinker. Now preference, uh, for me, typically if I'm fishing, you know, light line on a spinning rod, I'm going with that cylinder style. I don't like getting hung up in rock, that sort of thing. If I'm doing a little bit of the flipping or pitching with a bait caster, I'm throwing a power shot, I'll actually go with the with the teardrop style. It's just kind of all preference, but there's two different styles for you. One other thing to add, these both do have the little clip-on ties at the top of your weight. Where you just put your line in and pull it up it's, snug. It, yep. Uh, if you are a smallmouth guy or a guy that's fishing around fish that like to get airborne a lot, go with some kind of Swagger Taxel, uh, Taxel, Swagger Tackle makes a, a great one, a tie-on drop shot rod. That way, when they come and jump and they're flailing all over the place, they don't send your weight flying and you gotta put a new tungsten on. Right. Uh, let's jump into the baits at random. We'll just we'll just pick through these. These our are our choices. These are baits that we have a ton of confidence in and we fish all of these all the time. Uh, first one, the Big Bite Baits Smalley Smasher. Uh, this is more of a paddle tail style bait. So thin body leading out to a big wide floating paddle tail. This is a bait that I like to really dance. Some baits you like to be super subtle, just barely shake them, they'll just sit there and vibrate. This is one that I like to give pops of the rod to. When I give it those little pops, that bait will just jump and whip that paddle tail in the water. And I, it says Smalley Smasher. 
I've caught way more largemouth on it than I've ever caught smallmouth, but I catch a ton of smallies on it too. Comes in two sizes. The smaller size, which is this, for me is more smallmouth minded. The larger size is more largemouth minded. Both are great options. Uh, I went ahead and grabbed the Robo Worm and I grabbed the HD cover shot just so you guys can get a visual of how this is rigged. This is rigged Texpo, so the little hook point right there. But now I can fish this bait through grass, around dock pilings. I don't have to worry about that exposed hook. I can fish it on a bait caster. I can really jack this fish out of the cover, the cover if I need to. But with that said, the Robo Worm, either the six inch straight or the six inch fat, that is my probably my number one go-to worm for largemouth fishing. Margarita Emulator 3, one of my top favorite colors. Uh, morning dawn, some kind of a pink color. We'll link all of our favorite colors down below in yeah. the video description. But a robo worm, there's so many different colors uh, and they're they're super durable. And I, like I said, I just have a ton of confidence in that setup right there. Again, you're gonna have your weight suspended down here. You could fish this around through grass, uh, around dock piling, standing timber, all that stuff, and even offshore. You don't have to, out here on Chick, if you're out on the main river, you're fishing the ledges, something like that is gonna get bit. Now, Tim mentioned the video description. I don't think we said in this video. The purpose of this, in the video description, we'll link all this gear with links straight to Tackle Warehouse, right to each product. If you're watching this as it's coming out, you can still get in on the Black Friday sales. That's why we're doing videos seven days a week, trying to stack them in here for you. Uh, if you catch it later, still great information. But you can also give this to your loved ones as we're rolling into the holidays. It's hard to shop for anglers. We all know that. Uh, and this is something you can give to them. And that video description makes it super simple to find the things that you were asking about. Uh, so with that, we'll link our favorite colors with each product as well. My next one, this is the Spro Pintail Minnow. This little guy is one of those baits that I almost missed. It's a small bait, little twin tails on it. I saw this bait underwater and I freaked out. Absolutely freaked out because in the hand, not a whole lot going on. When you put this thing underwater and those twin tails start flowing, I mean, they flow. It's, it's unreal. You put that on that owner mosquito light and you just barely work it. And they just, it's insane. We've got underwater footage of a spotted bass coming out of nowhere and just never slowing down. Just coming all the way in and just destroying that thing right in front of the camera. Uh, and that has been my experience with it. They come in and smash that thing. It's a small profile, uh, works great on spotted bass, great on smallmouth. And it's a stretchy material. It's a, some sort of an Elastec or something like that. So it's a very durable bait that will last fish after fish after fish. All right, next bait up for me is gonna be this guy right here. This is the net bait. This is the flat sided shad. I have two sizes, a 3.5 and a 5.5. Five. Now what these are for, small mouth, spots, large mouth. A lot of guys just assume that the drop shot is for deep spots or small mouth, but large mouth eat these baits too. And mm -hmm. especially this style, you know, we talked about kind of the robo worm, the actual rubber plastic worm style. This is more of a flat sided shad, hence the name. It's a flat bait that has a ton of movement. Uh, that little tail just dances there in the current. You nose hook this. You don't have to Texas rig it, but this catches spots in small mouth and large mouth too. But that guy right there, new by uh, net bait now has the bait fuel um, in in the baits themselves so you don't have to put the bait fuel on and uh, they've been working great if you're not familiar with bait fuel there are basically there are two brands you've got berkeley and you've got american bait works that have both taken well and big bite actually with <laughs> sensation companies that are actually taking a science-based approach to their scent it's not just something that smells good to the human so you put up you open your bag and you're like bait fuel, that you, smells like great bait fuel, right? you can't even, we can't even smell it you can't smell bait fuel uh but the fish respond to it these are science-based scents that are being done in laboratories where they're actually coming up with products that fish want to eat and want to hold on to uh, and it definitely does make a huge difference. Yep. 
Uh, next one up for me, this is net bait. This is the crush worm. And actually this is an older package. If you bought one on a shelf today, it would also have bait fuel in it. Uh, the crush worm is amazing. They are hands down the softest of all of the baits. And as such, continue to work like a dream into the coldest water. As water temperatures drop, plastics become more rigid. And people miss that. Like a bait that's working great in May probably doesn't work the same in January. If you looked at it underwater in both, you'd be shocked at the difference in how your baits are moving. Uh, that crush worm is a true 12 month out of the year bait. They're super soft. They are not, as a result, the most durable. You will go through some baits. If you're on smallmouth and they're coming up head shaking, you're gonna lose some baits. There's no way around it, but you're getting the bites and that's what matters. I will trade a bait for two or three fish over and over again all day long if 50 of them want to bite a day, right? I'll never question that. All right, next up for me is gonna be this guy right here. This is the Powerbait Maxent Flatworm. This has been a bait that has been hard to get for the last couple years. There was a trend up north, Great Lakes, the smallmouth guys, the smallmouth just love them. Um, two different colors, green pumpkin, and uh, what's, what's this color? This is Black Shiner. Um, I thought I would, I thought I grabbed a different color. I like the black. The straight the black? straight black. That's a good color. I don't know, it's, it's the only worm that I actually throw straight black in. I don't know what it is. It's a small mouth up north, love it. But like Matt said, with the sensation and the net bait, the bait fuel, now there's three major players on the market that have scent. And we know just tried, I mean, through our trial and error and through tournament results and everything, smallmouth love scent so if you're going north you got to get one of these three baits but the flatworm has won a ton of money in the last few years and it's pretty hard to uh to beat that guy right there my last one here is the yamamoto shad shaped worm it's a very simple profile it's a full body and then it has this very thin tail section so as you're working it this is not one that i hop this is not one i'm super aggressive with this is one where you want it to vibrate. Just barely work it and you've got that tail back there just quivering. Very different ways of working all these different baits. It pays if you're at the boat ramp and you're not in a line of boats, stand right there on the concrete with your drop shot and play with each bait and you'll figure out if you should shake them, hop them, how to work each bait to really dial it in. But this one vibrates extremely well and it comes, there's now a little tiny one and there's a bigger one. So again, thinking largemouth, that bigger profile is a great option. When I go north, I prefer the four inch, although the three inch just came out and I need to try it next spring when I go up north. I'll report back on that one. But another killer option, and that is a perch color, which is a color I love throwing when we're up there. Yeah, Matt talked about it just a little bit, going and checking out how that bait's acting in the water. It's really important to see how that bait is acting in the water. And that's why we have so many different baits. They all act different in the water. Yeah. And that's why we recommended these ones because we have a ton of confidence in them. All right, this is the last of the buyer's guides that are going every single day. Tim and I are finally gonna get a break. We get a day off. So we are switching gears now back to our standard Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And we are in that fall to winter transition. So we're gonna pause the buyer's guides and the next few videos are going to be winter videos. Maybe some fishing, maybe talking about where fish are going in the winter. We're gonna help you guys with some of that. And then we'll jump right back into the buyer's guides as we work our way towards Christmas. But it'll be on our standard Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. This has been insane. I'm ready for a day off. We need to go fishing. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the buyer's guides so far. We're thrilled to keep this rolling. And we will see you uh, here in a couple of days. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.